Hi guys, it's Epsilon here and today's RuneScape 3 guide video looks at 3 great ways you can get passive money on RuneScape. Without further ado, let's get into the guide. So the first way to make passive money is using invention machines and invention itself. We've got a few different methods for this. Um, one of them kind of goes into one and then one's just like an extra. Um, in terms of the first one, that being invention machines, uh, so this is items like the Alchemizer Mark II, which is unlocked at level 108 invention, and it can be boosted using extreme invention potions to actually create the machine. You can do that in the Inventors Guild, um, and this allows you to alk items earned from Slayer and various other RuneScape-related combat for prices higher than the sale in the GE. Now, alternatively, you could just buy the items from the GE, which is more than likely what everyone's going to do, and literally takes you a maximum of three minutes to do. Now, in order to use the Alchemizer, you need both Divine Charges and Nature Runes uh, to complete the alking process in this machine. If you have the previous Alchemizer, Alchemizer Mark 1, you'd need Fire Runes as well, but for um, those of you that, you know, have managed to get the second alchemizer uh, you can earn more profit and you don't need the fire runes either so you can look up the best items to use in the alchemizer mark 2 uh, using the runescape wiki page alchemizer machine this will be linked in the video description and to determine the best item per hour Remember that buy limits are a thing, so although some items might say that you can earn maybe 60,000 um, per hour, this is significantly lower when it comes to the grand scheme of things because you probably won't be able to pick up too many of one item that will continually uh, be doing the process. So buy as many as you can, top it up as soon as you can uh, throughout the whole day, and you know, remember that they are buy limits and that, you know, Although it might make you 60,000 in one hour, it might not be able to then do it for the rest of the day. So top up the Alchemizer with multiple different streams of items that make you a lot of GP. You can do that using that calculator and the page uh, that I have linked in the description. So make sure you're doing that. In terms of how much money you can make, um, most rune salvage items or weapons can be used to generate an hourly GP of between 20 and 30,000 GP, which is seems like a small amount but over the course of one day can net you between 480,000 to 720,000 GP. Obviously if you factor in some of the higher end ones that can make more money like the dragon items uh, but they have a higher or a lower actual buy limit in the GE means that you can make about a million per day. Um, you can also increase this if you um, basically uh, make sure that you keep it to the most efficient as possible because within the calculation I did give a little error as to how much um, you know how often you'd be doing this to keep it at 100% efficiency now yes this might seem like a small amount but over the course of an entire week you can earn between three and a half to five million a week um, which is a nice boost for those of you that are just trying to get some passive income and considering you can use some of the other invention machines which we're about to talk about um, all together and it will basically be able to do that all in one go so you can go and do them all at the same time and yeah it basically boosts up the amount of time and the amount of money that you make for that time that you spend. Now another invention machine like we've been talking about is the partial potion maker which can get you approximately 500,000 per day using the calculator that will be in the description as well and you can essentially create this in the invention guild it requires 114 invention and is boostable you can then just add vials of water and clean herbs with whatever combination of potions is best from from the calculator so basically just choose whichever one has the highest profit you want to test them out before you do this though so remember that when you buy them you want to actually make a potion see how much it sells for and then make sure that the actual pricing is correct and that you can actually make the potion that yields the most amount of gp per one um, because that's basically going to make you more money now as far as other ones uh, we have the uh, auto disassembler mark 2 this is unlocked at a level 81 so it's a lower level 
item and it, it essentially just produces simple parts so what you want to be putting into the auto disassembler is maple logs it uses charges um, and it can actually be made into defined charges using these simple parts and they basically can make you anywhere between 500k to a million per day depending on the prices at the time of watching this video so obviously check out the prices yourself there will be a link in the description um, as to the best areas that you can have a look at the, the prices and then you can make up your decision as to which items you use within the invention machines and that will basically uh, mean that you can make a lot more money. So on average you'll probably be making about 2 million per day uh, just from basically putting in items into uh, invention machines. Obviously if you don't have the invention level then it's not particularly fantastic for you um, but we have a few other things that you can use to your advantage to be able to do this. Additionally creating armor or weapon perks with scavenging can be a really good way of saving some money passively. Now this isn't something I can calculate in terms of how much money you will actually save because it depends on a variety of different things. It depends if what you're coming up against is multiple opponents where you can do area of effect damage and get tons of actual uh, kill progress. So say if you uh, could damage um, or maybe you did bossing and you're literally just taking on one on one on a boss. There's no other mobs within the arena. You're going to probably not get very much uh, money from having scavenging and it's probably not worth you actually putting on the scavenging perk but for skills like slayer where you're constantly coming up against multiple opponents at one time uh, that will mean that you get more chances of actually getting these drops which means you get more chances of getting these rare components and they can basically save you a ton of money now this can also be used if you use Brooch of the Gods. This also gives a potential drop for you getting uh, these rare components. And this saves loads of money if you're able to get components like Shadow Components, Noxious Components or Illajankin Components. You will save yourself a ton, a ton of money. And in the future, should you wish to actually perk out your gear with the best in slot available at that time. Obviously this doesn't take into account the fact that more components might come in that are even more expensive which gives an even bigger incentive for you to actually use these various different uh, things. Obviously with things like Brooch of the Gods it's a very very expensive outlay in the beginning but over time and if you're going for 120s and you're going to be skilling a lot or if you just skill a lot in the first place and you don't really want to have to you know grind out tons and tons of slayer you just don't enjoy it then this is a great way to actually get invention components really really quickly um, I say really quickly it is slower than if you were to do slayer but it certainly does get you a lot of components and you know it's just something you can do in the background it doesn't take much thought you literally just click a blessing of the gods when it appears um, and that will basically give you four uh, components they're usually well they are uncommon components but they can be rare components as well so that's always really good and it's an extra way of making some actual money in the background depending on if you get lucky and you get a shadow a noxious or an illajankin component or uh, more expensive rare components you can get zamorak obviously any of the rare components in the game now another final invention way is actually using skilling perks that boost gathering skills. For example mining, archaeology, um, such perk is fortune. Now this gives a chance of doubling the material gathered and is great for saving money for arch materials or if you're AFKing arch caches for money and it also works for mining, woodcutting etc so it can produce considerably more GP. So that's just an extra note for those of you that maybe want to maximise the amount of money you're earning when you're doing these gathering skills. The second way to make money is using luck enhancers or grace of the elves while skilling to provide opportunity of getting extra loot on rare items uh, when skilling and can provide around about 100k per hour from sip simply clicking on the spirits um, on average that's not taking into account 100% of efficiency so if you miss a couple it will probably be about 100k an hour you can get rune salvage from it you can also get the chance of getting hazelmere signet rings um, and that will basically give you another chance of getting clue scrolls if you combine both the grace of the elves and the luck of the dwarves or any of the luck rings um, it gives you a chance of getting clue scrolls too so this is although it is a very expensive uh, kind of outlay or investment 
for players if you're looking to go for max and you're kind of low down in the first place then buying these is actually a good way to make some extra profit you can combine this with the brooch of the gods that we talked about earlier and you can make tons and tons of just passive income from literally doing nothing else except from equipping these items and it can actually save you a lot of um, the outlay costs for some of the materials if you're doing archaeology and it certainly is a great way to add profit on skills like wood cutting and stuff which have lower uh, income in the first place so you'll make a little bit more every single time and obviously if you're just doing arch caches you can make considerably more gp so yeah along with coming uh, with amazing features like being able to charge sign of the porters on the grace of the elves and teleport to chosen locations uh, similar to the max garden teleports for free and from anywhere except the wilderness on runescape is also an extra of the grace of the elves our final third method is player owned farms or ranch out of time whereby you can essentially use the farm hands that you can get for beans uh, to stop popular animals that are being traded within the current game uh, reaching past adolescent stage. This provides the highest XP out of all of the stages and hence why it's so popular and this basically gives the most amount of GP for that animal. Setting up your ranch or farm will right will actually allow you to farm tons of these adolescents, so things like chinchompers, dragons, various other things. You'll have to check the prices on the uh, ranch out of time kind of world or the farming world, uh, and then just have a look at what sort of prices the animals are going for, and then choose the most expensive one uh, for each different pen. If you set this up correctly on all of the different pens, as well as the breeding pen using that to optimize your money then you can actually make in the region of one to four million per day depending on if you are actually maxing the farm and ranch or just doing some of the pens this equates to a weekly income of between seven to 28 million per week which is crazy for something that maybe takes uh, 10 minutes so that's kind of something that you want to be doing overall uh, definitely makes a massive amount of money so the last bit of this video is collating all of the methods and how much you can actually expect for from a two weekly rotor since most players can use this to pay for bonds taking an efficiency of 100% for all of the activities combined along with playing two hours per day with brooch or luck of the dwarves on. Uh, and that you do an average GP amount for each method so you know taking the average amount. You can make between four and a half mil per day and about five mil per day, which is 31.5 million per week or an equivalent to 63 mil per two weeks. That's over twice what's needed currently for bonds and so can easily pay for your membership. And that basically equates to a yearly income of about 1.6 billion per year, which is crazy for something that literally takes 10 to 20 minutes of your time per day. Even if you only do this at 50% of the efficiency, you'll make 800 million per year, which can pay for a silly amount of different things. And I should note that this highly depends on prices of the items being talked about. And that if you get drops like the Hazelmere Signet Ring, obviously that's going to bring your total profit way, way higher. So that's taking out any of the super rare drops like the Hazelmere Signet Ring or any of the high end items that you could get from the Brooch of the Gods or any of the extra um, things, you know, luck, luck rings and stuff like that. Uh, so hopefully you guys found this a kind of eye-opening as to how much money you can make from such passive sources and be sure to let me know what you think and in the comment section down below give any of your opinions on other methods and if you want to see some more money making guides on runescape 3 then be sure to subscribe and like the video as it really helps out the channel and gets uh, the video to more other people in runescape Check out some more of my RuneScape videos on screen right now if you'd like to. Other than that, I hope you have a great rest of your day and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye.